like maybe this shade of lipstick was a mistake, but I'm committed at this point, and it does accentuate my resemblance to a corpse, so I suppose that's kind of on brand for this channel, and either way... Hello folks, welcome to another spooky story. Today we are leaving behind uh, the UK, Europe, and North America. We are actually headed to the state of West Bengal in India, which apparently, despite being called West Bengal, is actually uh, in the eastern part of India. So that's interesting. I mean, you might not find that interesting, but I think that's kind of a fun fact. Um, unfortunately, this is not a folk tradition that I'm very familiar with, so I'm going to muddle through as best I can. I am by no means an expert by any stretch of the imagination in, uh, in terms of Indian culture, but the story that I have chosen today is from, <clears throat> pardon me, is from a, a collection of folk tales called Folk Tales of Bengal. I don't know why my voice did a weird thing. I've got like 10 tabs open on my desktop at the moment because I've been looking up different things to, to go with this story. So if I seem like I, that's that's what I'm doing. So it is from a collection called Folk Tales of Bengal by a gentleman by the name of Lal Bahari Day. He was a, an Indian gentleman, actually from um, from the this, pardon me, I'm going to have to have some tea right off the top of the bat on this one. <clears throat> trying to, whoop, failed there. I was trying, I was trying to put that down um, without, without uh, making too much noise. Didn't, didn't succeed so much. Uh, so he was actually from uh, the region. He did not write these folk stories. These were just things that uh, he grew up with and uh, he wrote down later on. He was a journalist and um, later on converted to uh, Christianity and became uh, a missionary himself and seems actually uh, like a pretty interesting person. Mind you, I'm just looking at very brief um, descriptions of, of this gentleman. Uh, uh, well, I'll be honest, I'm, I'm on Wikipedia. Uh, like I said, not a part of the world, unfortunately, that I'm, I'm very familiar with in terms of history or culture, but I am very glad that he wrote these folk tales down because the the whole collection is actually very interesting. If, if you don't, if like me, this is not something you're familiar with, you should definitely read it because they're very good. So journey with me today to uh, the Bengal region and we will be reading a, well I'll be reading, you'll be listening, although in theory you could pull this up and, and read along with me, but I'm going to be reading uh, a story from his collection called The the Ghost Brahmin. Before we get started, just the, uh, the regular things. If you are enjoying, please like, subscribe, share the video around. Also, you know, the things that um, lead to ghosts and ghost stories are things that tend to be unpleasant, like murders and suicides and, and grisly and macabre doings. I don't recall, mind you, I say that in, I think, every video. I don't recall there being a lot of that in this, but I make no guarantees. So if that's something you are hesitant about, please feel free to not consume the content. In addition, again, I don't recall there being a lot of that uh, in this story, but these are Victorian. I believe this is Victorian. This is uh, 19th century and early 20th century uh, writing. So as such, they might contain things about race, religion, gender, orientation, what have you, that, uh, Generally, as modern people, we, we tend to find, we realize how offensive they are. And again, I don't recall there being a lot of that in, in this story, but it is a caution. And again, if that doesn't sound like your thing, feel free to, to move on and, and not, consume, uh, not consume this content. That's absolutely, not that you need my permission, but that is 
That is absolutely fine. As usual, I will be reading this aloud and probably commenting um, as I'm reading. This one you might get more comments than usual, even though this is a, this is a shorter piece because parts of it. Well, you'll see. I, I think for me, what what I found actually kind of funny was the very formal Victorian language contrasted with just the ridiculousness of the of the situation. And that will make sense to you as we go along here in the video. So without any more rambling from me, hopefully, we have The Ghost Brahmin by Lal Bihari Day. Once upon a time, there lived a poor Brahmin. Now, I am going to interrupt here slightly, and again, please don't take my word for it exclusively. Look this up. But my understanding is within the Indian caste system, Brahmins were usually or still are unclear. I, th I know it has technically been outlawed, but like there's still terrible discrimination. Again, do not take my word for any of this. Do your own research. I am not an expert. I am a random person reading an antique ghost story on YouTube. Do not take my word for any of this. But uh, the word Brahmin tended to be used for um, the priestly educated class. Although, as again, as I was looking this up myself, Apparently, it can also mean someone who is good and virtuous. So that might, that I think is what they mean when they say Brahmin. But again, not an expert. Please do not take my word for it. That could have all been lies. I don't know. If you are interested, look it up for yourselves. Please, please, please do not come after me for getting this word incorrect. So once upon a time, there lived a poor Brahmin who, not being a Kulin, I don't know what that is, found it the hard, at least I had trouble finding information. You might have better luck than me. Again, again, look it up yourselves. Do not take my word for this. Found it the hardest thing in the world to get married. He went to rich people and begged of them to give him money that he might marry a wife. And a large sum of money was needed, not so much for the expenses of the wedding, Okay, so that's a lie. Weddings, weddings are expensive. <laughs> Trust me on this. As for giving to the parents of the bride. Okay, so the dowry. He doesn't have the dowry himself, so he's got to beg for money from other people to get enough money for a dowry. Although that does beg the question of how he intends to support his family afterwards. Whatever, I'm not here to judge. I'm just asking questions, as I often do when narrating these things aloud for you. He begged from door to door, flattered many rich folk. Oh, that's that. Yes, that's the way to do it. And at last succeeded in scraping together the sum needed. The wedding took place in due time, and he brought home his wife to his mother. After a short time, he said to his mother, Mother, I have no means to support you and my wife. I must therefore go to distant countries to get money somehow or other. I may be away for years, for I won't return till I get a good sum. In the meantime, I'll give you what I have. You make the best of it and take care of my wife. Okay, so he is being responsible. He is uh, he is going to go out and, in theory, get a job and do some work and earn some cash. Okay, I'm less judgy of, of this man now. It seems like he does have a plan. The Brahmin, receiving his mother's blessing, set out on his travels. In the evening of that very day, a ghost is exhuming, a ghost exhuming itself, that would be weird. A ghost assuming the exact appearance of the Brahmin came into the house. The newly married woman, thinking it was her husband, said to him, How is it that you have returned so soon? You said you might be away from ye for years. Why have you changed your mind? The ghost said, Today is not a lucky day. Man, I have had those days. I feel you there, ghost. I have therefore returned home. Besides, I have already got some money. The mother did not doubt but that it was her son. <clears throat> so the ghost lived in the house as if he was its owner, and as if he was the son of the old woman and the husband of the young woman. As the ghost and the Brahmin were exactly like each other in everything, like two peas, the people in the neighborhood all thought that the ghost was the real Brahmin. 
Guys, guys, the ghost stole his identity. <laughs> and I know that having your identity stolen is actually a really big deal and causes pain and stress and can wreck your finances for years. But that that's just, that is so funny for me, to me. And if you're wanting me to explain myself, I can't. I don't know why I find that situation as hilarious as I do. This ghost just saw some dude walking, didn't know who this guy, just decided I'm going to invasion of the body snatchers this bitch and steal his life. What is the ghost's thought process? Like, how, how corporeal is this ghost where he can do that? Is he like, is he going to the bank? Like, I, I just have so many questions about how this was pulled off. And like, I get the wife not being able to tell because, you know, they're, they're newly married. But as the mother, like, isn't, isn't like a mother's love and a mother's instinct, especially in literature, supposed to be like the be all and end all? Like, how do you not know? Come on. After some years, the Brahmin returned home from his tra travels. And what was his surprise when he found another like him in the house? Yeah, I bet, buddy. I bet there was a little surprise. Also, years. This ghost lived as this dude for years. And I have so many questions about how that happened. <laughs> like I said, I know identity theft is actually a big deal, but come on, th this is like a little funny. The ghost said to the Brahmin, who are you? What business have you to come to my house? Who am I? replied the Brahmin. Let me ask who you are. This is my house. That is my mother and this is my wife. The ghost said, why, herein is a strange thing. Yeah, pretend like you don't know what's going on, ghost. Everyone knows that this is my house, that this is my wife, and yonder is my mother. Also, yonder is a cruelly underused word in modern society. And I have lived here for years. And you pretend this is your house, and that that woman is your wife. You must have got turned, Brahmin. I mean, you'd think people would at least question why this person, why these two identical and apparently unrelated people are, like, you'd think you'd at least question why there were two identical strangers, right? Like, is that just me? I, f I feel like I would question that. So saying, so saying the ghost drove away the Brahmin from his house, that's really shitty. The Brahmin became mute with wonder. I mean, I'd be enraged and probably wetting my pants in a combination of fear and awe, but I get this guy clearly handles it better than I could have. He did not know what to do. At last he bethought himself of going to the king and of laying his case before him. The king saw the ghost Brahmin as well as the Brahmin, and the one was the picture of the other, so he was in a fix and did not know how to decide the quarrel. Day after day, the Brahmin went to the king and besought him to give him back his house, his wife, and his mother. And the king, not knowing what to say every time, put him off to the following day. Every day, the king tells him to come tomorrow. And every day, the Brahmin goes away from the palace, weeping and striking his forehead with the palm of his hand, saying, What a wicked world this is. I am driven from my own home, and another fellow has taken possession of my house and of my wife. And what a king this is. He does not do justice. Again, this man is handling it way better than I would have. There would be screaming and swearing. The situation would probably have resolved itself because I have trouble um, acting like a not rage and filled goblin when I'm really upset. So the situation would have solved itself if this were me, because the king would have killed me for calling him any one of a number of um, disrespectful insults. But also, I mean, I, I, I get the king having a problem here. Like, I don't like what would you do if, if two identical people and were, came to you and were like, that guy's actually he stole my 
He stole my identity. He stole my possessions. We look exactly alike, but we're not related. Which, like, does the Brahmin know this guy's a ghost? I just have so many questions about the logistics of this situation. You see what I mean now when I say, like, the seriousness of what is going on and the very formal language contrasted with just the sheer absurdity of what is happening is kind of funny. Now it came to pass that as the Brahmin went away every day from the court outside the town, he passed a spot which a great many cowboys used to play. Cowboys, not in the West, like in this sense, literally boys tending to cows, not like guns slinging, rootin' tootin', Billy the Kid kind of deals, like, like, like kids, boys who are, are tending to, to cows. They let the cows graze on the meadow, while they themselves met together under a large tree to play. That sounds like a solid work day, not gonna lie. And they played at royalty. One cowboy was elected king, another prime minister or vizier, and another catwal or prefect of the police, and others constables. Every day for several days together, they saw the Brahmin passing by, weeping. One day the Cowboy King, which is a great name for a band, the Cowboy Kings, I'd listen to them, asked his vizier whether he knew why the Brahmin wept every day. The vizier, not being able to answer the question, the Cowboy King ordered one of his constables to bring the Brahmin to him. One of them went and said to the Brahmin, The king requires your immediate attendance. The Brahmin replied, What for? I have just come from the king, and he put me off till tomorrow. Why does he want me again? It's our king that wants you, our neat herd king. Neat meaning cow, cattle, not neat as in tidy. It's an older word for cow type things. It is our king that wants you, our neat king, our neat herd king, rejoined the constable. Who is neat herd king? asked the Brahmin. Come and see, was the reply. The neat herd king then asked the Brahmin why he every day went away weeping. The Brahmin then told him his sad story. The neat herd king, after hearing the whole, said, I understand your case. I will give you again all your rights. Only go to the king and ask his permission for me to decide your case. That's a smart kid right there. You can't, uh, you can't be accused of trying to usurp the king or commit treason if you've asked for, for permission. So smart kid, smart kid right there. <clears throat> ba, 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 ask his permission. The Brahmin went back to the king of the country and begged his majesty, his majesty, his majesty to send his case to the neat herd king who had offered to decide it. The king, whom the case had greatly puzzled, granted the permission sought. The following morning was fixed for the trial. The neat herd king, who saw through the hole, so yeah, really smart kid compared to everybody else here, brought with him next day a file with a narrow, um, <clears throat> pardon me, with a narrow neck. File? Vile. Like a little glass container. The Brahmin and the ghost Brahmin both appeared at the bar. So bar, like court kind of set up, not like going out drinking bar, that would also be weird. Although at this point in the story, I would be all for it. Why not? After a great deal of examination of witnesses and of speech making, the neat herd king said, well, I have heard enough. I'll decide the case at once. Here is this file. Whichever of you will enter into it shall be declared by the court to be the rightful owner of the, pardon me, of the house, the title of which is, pardon me, hiccups. Pardon me. Let me let me start that one again. Well, I have heard enough. I'll decide the case at once. Here is this file. Whichever of you will enter into it shall be declared by the court to be the rightful owner of the house, the title of which is in dispute. Now let me see which of you will enter. I like this kid. This is great. The Brahmin said, you are a neat herd and your intellect is that is of a neat herd. What man can enter into such a small file? I feel like don't be sassy, because this kid seems to know what's up. Mind you, this, this dude's poor dude's put up with a lot of shit at this point. If you cannot enter, said the neat herd king, then you are not the rightful owner. 
What do you say, sir, to this, turning to the ghost Brahmin and addressing him? If you can enter into the file, then the house and the wife and the mother become yours. Of course I will enter, said the ghost, and true to his word, to the wonder of all, he made himself into a small creature like an insect and entered into the file. The neat herd king forthwith, bleh, the neat herd king forthwith corked up the vial, and the ghost could not get out. Then, addressing the Brahmin, the neat herd king said, Throw this vial into the bottom of the sea, and take possession of your house, your wife, and mother. The Brahmin did so, and lived happily ever after for many years, and begat sons and daughters. So, happy ending. Um, after all, pardon me, my throat is very dry. Definitely um, not as scary as some of the other stories I've, uh, I've featured on this channel, but it is just so charming that I, I loved it as, as soon as I started reading it, the first time I read it, rather. And it's just, like I said, I think it's the contrast of the, the formal language and the, the actual seriousness of, of what is going on. Just the absurdity of, of the situation, a ghost stealing your entire life. No one realizes he's a ghost. The king can't help you. And in the end, it's this group of, of boys that are just screwing around under a tree playing that that fix everything and there's just something so amusing and charming about that that I really wanted to to share it with you and like I said as the more I started to think about it the more I had questions about how this how the ghost was pulling this off like he must have been like a physical solid form for for and I, I know there's no sense trying to, to find logic in in this but it just raised so many hilarious questions the more I thought about it yeah I just I love this story I thought it was very sweet and funny and I hoped I hope you loved it uh, as much as as I do. Please seek out more works from Lal Bihari Day. Uh, the The rest of the stories in this collection are are also quite good. There is at least one other story in it that I would I would like to to feature on my channel. Comment below if you can think of other ridiculous uh, questions about how the ghost actually pulled a lot of this off. I feel like this story, if you were to stretch it out, I feel like this would make such a great sort of horror comedy and Bollywood should get on that. Like I, I, I do watch um, Bollywood movies that are just on, on Netflix. I quite like them. I've seen really good comedy and I've seen really good horror. So if they could get on this and make uh, some kind of black comedy based uh, around this this folk tale, I I would love it. I would I would definitely watch uh, and enjoy that. So if you have watched and enjoyed, please like this video, please subscribe to my channel, please share my videos around and help other people discover great stories and great authors that they might not have known about. I hope you and your families are safe and well and happy and I hope the new year that we are going into turns out much more pleasant than the old one that we are leaving behind. So goodbye folks and thanks for watching. <laughs>